Welcome to our webinar today. We're going to cover compliance. Thanks for signing up. My name is Clay Reese. I am the Director of Operations for Bovisync. I want to cover a lot of information pertaining to compliance. And if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. We'll try the presentation. First, let me introduce you to my co-host, Roger Olson. Roger is an account manager with Zinpro. He works with herds across the Midwest, including a number using Bovisync. Good morning, Roger. Good morning. <clears throat> so would you like me to Roger has that? had what? You work with the program about two years now? Uh yeah, you about work that. With the program about two years now? Yeah, yes. Is that correct? Excellent. And primarily, you're doing reporting for hoof trimming? Yes, I do a lot of lameness audit type work. And, and then some conventional looking at repro and what have you. But most better than half of what I do is related to lameness. So what part of that is compliance on the dairies you work with? It's a huge, it's a huge part of what I do. Um, Compliance. When, when you look at it, it, yes, it is. It's a it's a huge it's a huge concern for what I for what I do. Uh, be, with with the uh, trimming data, it's not recorded correctly, not recorded consistent consistently, and uh, a lot of the things that I look at, you know, are are ten percent, five percent, three percent. So I need to have accurate data to actually have any validity validity in the work that I do. So how often does the data reveal what the farms say they're doing on, on most of the farms you work with? Um, if I looked at all, all systems, I'm going to say that it's probably 65% of the time, maybe. Hard, hard, hard to judge exactly, but it's definitely not 100. Sure. So what's the what's the cost of that low compliance? Well, for for how me, do you personally, see that manifesting on these farms. For for me, it's very it's hard for me to help if I don't have any any uh, uh, confidence in the data that I have. Um, it's really hard to say that we have a sole ulcer issue. We have a we have a white line abscess issue. We have a DD issue. If I can't believe the numbers that I have. So everything that I do records wise, I have to throw out the door. So I have to go to the farm and completely rely on what I see. And uh, I much prefer to, to see what I see on the dairy and com combine that with the record system that I have confidence in. Cause then I have a very high probability of what I suggest being successful. So in addition to, you know, foot trimming, I see a big benefit in being able to look at these reproductive protocol chores and getting everything recorded for vaccines when they're actually done, who gave them, what's actually happening with these antibiotic protocols. Do we actually have a recording that it actually happened? Uh, all that I think is really helpful. In addition, just what's the consistency of diagnosis we're making on the dairies? going to come up in your information later when we talk about lesions and how that's reported. So obviously this is a Bovisync uh, centric presentation and I just want to take a moment about uh, to, to mention some of the things that herd management software can do and particularly with Bovisync it's completely transactional. You know we use protocols to create chores those chores are completed they become events we can go look back through the history. We're able to attribute the completion of those chores by technician with timestamps. We have the ability to use ubiquitous devices that are inexpensive, and we can essentially set a dairy up to do all the recording with handhelds, and then couple that for report. Important, you know, the same structure across all dairies. That way, Roger can basically run the same reports across all Bovisync farms. Data, 
Bovisync is built to handle more data than any other software out there, and it's transferable between farms. So hopefully uh, we can actually uh, see that as we go through the data. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger. Roger is going to provide us some highlights from the typical presentation that he does with dairies. And it's based on data that he's pulling out of Bovisync. And then Roger can do that and explain how he uses Bovisync to, to get this information. So first slide, Roger. So uh, with, with Bovisync, and I, I really like it because it's the data is definitely more consistent. So what, what I usually do is I, I put everything in a format that I, that I, a gentleman named Tom Bennett and I do together. And uh, we have this huge database or we, we compile and I try to figure out what the top 20th, we try to figure out what the top 20th percentile for, for types of herds. And then this data here, we, we parts of it we compare to that top 20th percentile. And what we'll do is uh, we'll look at one of the, I'll just give you an example. These slides are some of the things that we'll look at when we're when I'm looking at uh, trying to solve a lameness issue or just trying to do a yearly update as to where we're at lameness wise in a herd to compare with previous years. One of the first things we'll look at is just how many cows that we trim. This particular herd we had in over ten thousand, and uh, they're milking about 4,600 cows, and that equates to about two point one seven trims per cow, which would be pretty typical of what I like to see, uh, a dry off trim and a mid lactation trim and a few fix it trims. This next slide is, does a nice job of showing the pattern as to how many trim events they're having by month. This is fairly consistent. Uh, so that tells me that this particular herd in-house trim uh, has an in-house trimmer and he's consistent, so that's good. Next slide. Uh oh, are we stuck, Clay? Did I lose you, Clay? Yeah, you just kind of fell out. I got lost there for a second, so. Okay, good. Nope, okay. I, I'm still here. Okay, so the slide now. So we're this on the is, cut uh, by events slide. Yes, yes. And uh, this slide shows you the total amount of, of each trimming event. Uh, the, the most common occurrence, obviously, is maintenance trims of 9,680. And then you can see we have a few seal bruises, a few uh, warts, digital termititis. Uh, this particular herd doesn't really have a whole lot of concerns, but this just gives you the numbers. So it gives me a quick idea. What are the biggest issues on this farm? This slide here, the, the lesions by month over the last year. And uh, this herd act doesn't have a lot of issues. Um, uh, you can just looking at the peer number of, of, of lesions that they have in relationship to 4,600 cows are pretty minor. This does show, I do like looking at this because it does show the patterns over the last year, what's changed. Uh, one thing that sticks out here is not a very big issue, but they are having a few more warts or digital termititis and foot rot along with that, the, uh, the slightly. Uh, January, February, March. Um, there was a little bit of time that they weren't able to use a bath due to winter. But per, per, actually, a pretty clean slide. But this this slide does tell me a lot. It's fairly typical during the summer to see saw ulcers, white line abscesses, etc., going up due to heat stress related issues. Uh, the next slide. And now, this is all. This data is all coming from the pre-built. Correct. I uh, say that again, please. The reporting Clay. for the lesions. The lesions are coming from the reported uh, cat galleries in Bovisink. Correct. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. 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 And um, the the this next slide here is is uh, what I look at in terms of days and milk. And the reason that I like looking at this one is you can see the trimming pattern of this herd. Uh, they have a dry off pin, pit trim. You look at the 301 to 360. Uh, the previous and post uh, dates to those, uh, you can see the dry off trim. 
And then uh, the 121 to 180 days in milk, and you can see a mid-lactation trim. So this tells me they very clearly have a two, a two trim events per lap per cycle, which I like to see. Uh, next. So this is the same second. slide without the trim. Exactly. This is yep. And the reason I do I look at it look at it this way is then you can just it's, it's cleaner. You can actually see without all those maintenance trims in there. And um, not a lot of issues in this particular herd. If I had to pick out a few things that stick out a little bit is in the first, in the zero to 60, 60 day in milk category. Do have a few more soul bruises than we would like, and some more warts than we probably like. Um, not terrible, but a, a few more. Otherwise, pretty typical patterns. The next slide, please. Another another great thing to look at is lesions by lactation number. <clears throat> um, and that slide did show uh, what's going on with, with each lactation number. Um, a few more warts maybe than we would care to have and a little bit more bruising in the first lactation, but there again, not too bad. This next slide with the, uh, the lactation of one, two, and three plus, you can see, you can see the trimming patterns, uh, very similar again, mid lactation and dry off trims. The slide now up is shows you the same exact thing without the minutes trims and, uh, what you can see here is uh, the older cows are having more of the non-infectious lesions, the, the red bars. That would be soul ulcers, white lines, toe ulcers, etc. That's pretty typical, uh, just like humans. When you get older, you have more non-infectious issues. And then uh, you can also see that uh, when you go to lactation one, there, there, is a, there was a few more Infectious lesions, uh, warts coming in, but, but not terrible. The slide that Clay has up now is times trimmed as a percent of cows trimmed. Basically, what this says uh, is that um, there are cows within this herd that have been trimmed as much as 12 times within the last 12 months. Not many of those. Um, Sometimes there's there's justifications for having multiple trimmings for some good old cows that have some chronic issues but still are very productive and that's fine. But we don't want a lot of that. And my personal goal is for lactate for trims one, two, and three within the last 12 months not to be over, not to be less than 95%. This herd is at 95%. If you have a lot more, if you have a lot lower than 95%, one of the things I worry about is our lesions not getting fixed by the trimmer. Um, you can go on to the next slide if you like, Clay. Uh, is the systems, uh, oh, there we go. This particular slide here shows the metrics and you can see in the right-hand column that we have the 20th percentile goal. That is based on all the data that we've compiled over a lot of herds over a lot, number of years. And uh, the top metric is all cows of one lesion per, per, per animal per year. We're at 6%. Um, it's pretty good. Um, our goal is in the top 20 percentiles being not more than not more than 13%. So that's that's fairly exceptional. Very closely related to that is the second one with lactation one with one lesion per year. We're at 5%. Again, that's very good. The second, the, or excuse me, the third and fourth categories are somewhat related like the first two. Uh, we're, we're looking at the trim events that occur within the first 60 days as a percent of fresh. We're a little high there, and they did have a few more maintenance trims that are occurring as a fresh animal. Um, than, than I would like to have. I prefer not to have any maintenance terms in that first 60 days, if at all possible. Um, but probably more importantly is that that next one is the lesions in the first 60 days in milk is a percent of fresh. This is only lesions. We're only at 2%. So we only had 2% of all the animals freshening in the last 12 months that had any kind of a lesion recorded in the first 60 days. So I'm pretty happy about that. The fifth category is an important one is get lame, stay lame. 
uh, and we're at 1%. And what that is, is if an animal reoccurs with the same lesion within a short period of time, uh, we're calling it, we're, we're calling her, she's, she, she got lame and she stayed lame. And we want that to be very low. So that can be an indication that the animal didn't get fixed again. And then last but not least is, uh, is looking at uh, the lactation zero animals of which there are only uh, 300 and so trimmed here and we didn't have a lot of issues. So you can go on to the next, next uh, slide. <clears throat> there we go. This are 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 all are the major lesions as a percentage of the of the lactating cows. And here again, this herd's pretty exceptional. We have a few warts, or three percent of our animals had a wart. Our top twenty our top twenty percent is four percent. So it's quite exceptional. Um, really not much of anything else. We do have some sole hemorrhages at two percent which is more than a 1%, that's a goal. But sole hemorrhages are realistically a beginning sole ulcer, if you will. And uh, I, I like to see this type of a pattern. This means that they're catching a sole, an early sole ulcer very early when it's still in a hemorrhage stage and they're getting it fixed. So they are not turning into sole ulcers. So I would, uh, I I'm pretty happy with, with that pattern. Otherwise it's pretty exceptional. And you can go to the next slide, Clay. <clears throat> <clears throat> and we must be stuck. Roger. Roger. Yes. No, there it goes. Go ahead, Clay. So, Roger, I just uh, curious, what impact does mobile device entry have on the accuracy of this data, in your opinion, especially on the farms that are doing herd trim, have herd herdsmen doing the trimming? It's a really big deal because, uh, if, it, if it's really easy to do and it's right there at the shoot with our iPad or, or whatever, the opening are really high uh, compared to you write it on it, you, you get a sheet, you bring it out there, it gets crapped on, you, you write something on there that maybe is not legible and then you got to go take that back and, and, and enter it. And there's just more room for error. So I much prefer it's just done directly. And with most of these herds that I that I deal with, on so I'm going to skip ahead to the next slide. Yep. Uh, why don't you go back one if you could? I just the I, I see lactation equal to zero. There you go. Perfect. This this lesion repeat ratio chart is another attempt at looking at our lesions getting fixed. And uh, the top one on the list is warts, digital dermatitis. We're at 1% where they actually repeat. That's extremely exceptional. That's uh, many times when I see that, if, that, if that's quite high, I ask about uh, how are we, are, what treatment are we using to treat warts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The only, and everything else on here is pretty low. The, the two exceptions would be the sole bruising. The same conversation I had about the previous slide, though, is a bruise is literally a small sole ulcer before it turns into a sole ulcer. Uh, they've had a few that they're catching them very early, so I'm, so I'm fine with that. And in toe ulcers, uh, that 12% is a little bit fictitious. They've only had a few toe ulcers. Um, and toe ulcers are really, really hard to fix. So I, I am just fine with that, that 12%. Okay, then you can go to the, la the last slide that I have, uh, Clay, which was the heifers. It should come up here in a second. And this one here, this particular herd is only trimming 300 and some head of heifers in a year. And there's not a lot of issues, a few bruises, a few warts, but percentage-wise it's very good. So, and that's all the slides that I have, Clay. So I think Roger did a great job of talking about how he works with his herds and really getting deep on a particular subject that a lot of us don't think about often. And that's that hoof trimming data and what good data for hoof trimming can mean for us when we're trying to learn more about a herd. I'm going to take 
a few more minutes here, it's like 10 minutes, and I'm going to go through some reporting in Bovisync that I think is important for measuring compliance. I'm going to start off with some histogram type data, essentially just trying to explain what's actually happening on the dairy. And then we're going to move on to some technician transactional type data. And this kind of ledger was looking at, but essentially in Bovisync, you know, we have a lame event and obviously there's going to be some differences between farms, but I just went in and grabbed some reports from different farms and uh, I'm going to share those with you now. We'll take the links to these reports and send them out in an email to everyone who signed up for the webinar. So as far as the reports have access, we're just cover about today. So uh, this graph here is a um, just a simple histogram of days in milk. Why is that not working? There we go. <clears throat> days in milk at lame and. Uh, you know, essentially, we're just got the ability to do these days in milk groups so we can bring things together. And it really cleans up data as opposed to just looking at days in milk. And it's dependent on which module you're in, whether test day, day data or animal data. In this case, we're talking about an events table or an events report. And we can actually uh, categorize the days in milk groups to kind of group them together. The first thing you'll notice is the date range. That's the actual range that the events occurred on. If you want to look at the past 30 days, we can go ahead and type 30 days in, and it will always run that report 30 days ago, which is kind of a nice feature in Bulbasync. So if we save this report with 30 days ago or click the hyperlink, we'll show this report. So this is a representation of this farm, uh, lame, reported for the past 30 days. This is another farm. This farm does not do the mid-lactation hoof trimming. Uh, they only do the hoof trimming or maintenance hoof trimming at dry off. And we can see those two bumps. So we look by days of milk in this herd. We have a spattering of those lame cows coming in to get trimmed. So another way to look at it would be by days carried calf. And this basically just validates that we are, in fact, trimming right before dry off. And kind of segregating by the event number of lactation for the type. And the most important filter in any of these event reports is the actual event type. That's the most efficient way to get this. This is another farm where they are doing the mid-lactation and they're trimming right at 100 days. So they got real high compliance on this farm. And then you can kind of see the subsequent bumps for the, the cows right before dry off. It's an example of just super high compliance. And again, we can kind of move that days and milk group cohort together for the smaller dairies to get it to make more sense. First place I always tell people to go when they start with Bovisync is just to go to the report map. And we do have some pre-built reports in here that we kind of combined in for the compliance report. And it's just the easiest place to go right at your top of your menu uh, under reports is the report map. You go here and you can kind of click through and these are hyperlinks to reports that are available and pre-built. And we're constantly adding these and trying to make it more user-friendly. So I really, really think it's probably the best place with both the You can modify them to meet your needs, whether it's dates or the cohorts. Try to make more and more material and information together for people to put this together. Now, kind of looking at the reproductive data, you know, real quick, when when our animal's calving, we can basically take the cohorts, uh, this is an event table, and we're just grouping them by age and months when the freshening event happens for those calves. So then... Um, <clears throat> You see, this is a really simple graph. We have a regular, just one item up here, and that's the animal age in months. And then we have it by the event type for fresh. 
and count. Here's a animal report. This one's a little bit different, and we're looking at all the animals. And this is just that days in milk at first breeding. So essentially, instead of an event, we're looking at all the animals. So there'll be one entry for all of our lactating animals over the past 400 days. And we're just seeing kind of what's the distribution of that first breeding for compliance. Kind of a, a real nice quick shot. I think this is a graph that everyone's familiar with and has seen. Bovisync does give you the ability to click on an individual animal in those scatter plots and bring her up so we can go see why she's an outlier. Uh, I don't know why this animal got skipped or whatever. But we can go look at her cow card and determine why she might not be compliant, which I think is a important feature. And we're able to do that with the scatter plots. Here's a histogram of that days in milk at first service. So instead of looking at it across uh, time, we're just looking at all those animals aggregated together and we get to see a nice distribution of where those animals fall. For the most part, obviously this dairy is using a timed AI. <coughs> and again, just really simple report, one item, one date range. Now we're taking the subsequent uh, breedings farther down the road. And again, these graphs are really helpful for determining how a dairy actually works, what they're actually doing. And uh, we can do these with different events. We can do it with fresh cow events. We can do it with breedings. We can do it with hoof trimming. <clears throat> so as I was kind of saying before, like we really start talking about data and Bovisync, you know, we're really talking about the transactions. And in this simple graph, we can see what actually were out there for chores, what got completed. And this simple two by two graph, we're taking the chores that were due and seeing how many got converted by the actual generic drug type. So you kind of see the compliance on this They have a 99% compliance over the past week. There were 24 shots that were not completed. Maybe these cows were animals that got bred uh, the day that the shot was due and they didn't get the shot. Maybe they were missed. Maybe the animals lost. But I would say that this is a fairly good number on this large dairy. And again, we're looking at repro numbers over the past seven days. And again, like we did earlier before, uh, you can put these date logic in. In this particular case, it's eight days ago to one day ago because we want to skip today as the devices might not have come in yet. And we have just two items here, the treatment name versus the event or chore. And that gets us the two columns in this two by two graph. And all event type reports, we do want to start with that event type, in this case, treatment. The two by two graphs actually split everything up to 100% as you look across that. It's kind of want to explain there. And then uh, that's the same graph tipped over, but this is only for today. In this case, we do have a lot of things that weren't completed, but I believe that's because one of the devices was not downloaded for the day yet. So we have the chores sitting out there. So hopefully these numbers are much better when we look back at this particular dairy. So they stood 11 factrail shots that were due. Now we're just looking at the same graph instead of by looking, uh, uh, we're looking by the specific protocol and seeing which we missed. And maybe there's something that we have set up wrong. So maybe this is helpful for us to determine whether or not we have uh, the ability or getting the right cows. And this is probably a really great way to troubleshoot some of those protocols in retrospect. <clears throat> and again, these are all built on individual transactions. This is an example of the timestamps of the time when it actually got completed. The technicians kind of blurred out in the right, uh, but essentially we can really track it down and determine what is actually happening on that dairy and really troubleshoot things. 
And again, that's because it's transactional. They're using a device in the barn to record everything. And I think that's that's where Bovisync really shines. There's really no comparison to other herd software, what we can actually get. Here's an example of some diagnosis, uh, what are technicians actually diagnosing? And we essentially just take the diagnosis event and then look at the specific event types inside the diagnosis event for transition diseases. And we take it by the technicians that recorded those over the period of time, and we can come up with this chart. And we can make this for any time span. Uh, we can do it by uh, days of the week if we wanted to instead of this. But essentially, we get that real nice quick snapshot of what people are actually doing the work on the dairies. And of course, calving reports, we can go in and we can drill down on those technicians and we can really summarize those counts and what's actually happening. Obviously, on this dairy, it's a high performing dairy. They have very few uh, stillborn animals recorded and uh, a fairly decent number of calves. And we get to see if there's any outliers real quick. And I think this is a really helpful place to really drill down on farms when we have problems. <clears throat> and again, the same thing that applies to the repro shots, we can apply to essentially any protocol. And in this case, I removed the technician, but we can really record when things actually happened on the dairy by protocol, by day of treatment, and just find out what our true compliance is. Because Roger was helping me today, I included this simple quick snapshot of the diagnosis by technicians. And again, if we have different uh, people trimming cows on our dairy, if we have enough observations and they're working with the same cows, we'd expect these numbers to line up. And perhaps it's a snapshot or an opportunity for us to find differences and maybe uh, illustrate some points that we need to, to focus on. So uh, just real quick blurb about Bovisync. Um, I know that many of you have joined today have already gone through kind of what Bovisync is. And I just wanted to share real quickly again, the benefits for all dairies. Uh, we emphasize access to data anywhere. Data ownership is extremely important to us and our customers. I think that we have an extremely intuitive interface and the ability to share these reports is extremely helpful. Some of the benefits for large dairies are that labor savings when they fully take advantage of the mobile software, employee training, as we set up the app to really match what's happening on the dairy, we can really help them. In addition, multi-herd access and inventory control are big, helpful things for larger dairies. <clears throat> as far as upcoming events, I think we're going to be scheduling a couple more webinars in the next few weeks. Please check us out on Facebook, and we'll be sure to be updating it there, as well as our website at www.bovisync.com. If you have a farm that's interested in Bovisync, please let us know. <clears throat> so special thanks to Scott Munez who helped put together some of these slides today. Scott is our data consultant and often takes most of the support requests for reports. My name, of course, is Clay Reese. Feel free to email me with any questions. Uh, support at bovisync.com. We will try to answer any issues that consultants have or dairies have in getting the reports they need. Training.bovisync.com is a link to our course website and links to our website. And special thanks to Roger Olson from Zinpro. Roger, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, uh, just thanks everybody for listening. Thanks everyone. Have a great, well, let's, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. So um, just checking the question board here. <clears throat> so.
So I see one question here about some of these uh, the, the reports that are pulling up, and I will send links to all the reports that we're doing. In addition, I would like to say that we are doing a lot of active development on the reports. And one of the restrictions right now, the current report system is the inability to do multiple buys, you know, buy this, buy this, buy this. And we are looking forward to soon having the ability to do multiple layers. And I think that'll be extremely helpful for some of these reporting needs uh, and making it simpler to create some of these deeper reports. I think uh, we can definitely dig a little bit into shock compliance and fertility programs and vaccination programs. And I think we try to do that with some of the event chore reports, but I think uh, maybe there's potential for a lab or a, a calendar type report. So again, we will send out an email with all the links to the reports. Thanks, everyone, for their time. Thank you, Roger. Have a great day. Thank you.